How you guys doing? Good coach, how are you doing? I'm um, doing great. We are back with linebackers coach Chris Claiborne. Thanks for the time, coach. Oh, no, thanks for having me. If you have a question for coach, please use the raise hand function. When asking your question, please state your name and affiliation. Thank you. Start off with Hode. Hi, Coach. Hode Rabino, Devil's Digest. How you doing? Good, man. How you doing? Good. Thanks for asking. So um, is there any uh, way to um, not overstate the impact that Antonio Pierce had in you being sitting right here right now as a member of this ASU staff? <laughs> no, nah, it's definitely him. He definitely got me in. I, but I, I will say this. Um, when I stepped in the building to do the interview, uh, the other coaches here made me feel welcome. And so when he came down to deciding of leaving USC and coming here, it wasn't hard because of the coaches, staff. I mean, again, they just made me feel so welcome just on the interview. So I can only imagine spending time over the next couple months with them, how it would be. Chris? Yes, sir. Chris Cartman, son of a source. Um, oh, there you go. Yeah. How you doing, Chief? Doing good, man. Just wanted to ask about this, um, you know, this competition that's been brewing between ASU and USC and you being on the other side of it now, uh, you know, having played, you know, for the Trojans and Southern California deep roots and what ASU is trying to accomplish. Uh, can you just give some perspective on how you see that? Uh, first of all, my job is to try to bring in the best talent, some great talents in California, as well as there's some great talent in Arizona. So that's my main thing. And then as far as the competition between the two programs, it's about winning the Pac-12 South. And it doesn't matter who we got to go through to get there. That should be our only, only focus. Uh, but yes, USC has a great history. Uh, I know that. I, I, you know, I've been there. I've been a part of it. But at the end of the day, um, I'm looking forward to what I got to do and be able to do here with the group of linebackers that I have here. So it's not personal, it's straight business. Christian. Yeah, hi coach, Christian Babcock, Cronkite News. Hi. Nice to meet you. Good, P appreciate your energy, it's nice. Um, I was wondering with the linebacking core that you have coming back, obviously so much experience and so much talent, how do you sort of plan to help them try to take that next step looking at the next level and just their performance in the conference this season? Well, I think, first of all, is to fit the, make sure that we can keep the culture right, right? Those guys are the leaders, um, not only on the field, but off the field. So that's going to be the first thing that I continue to push on them. Uh, AP's done a great job of developing those guys. But it's just going to be some new tweaks that I'm going to add to it. And uh, our coaching style might be the same to them, might be a little different. But at the end of the day, um, just getting them to be more consistent and as productive as possible within the defense. Um, sometimes... Uh, you can get yourself out of out of place trying to do something that you're not supposed to be doing. So just playing the defense and then creating as much depth. There's guys that haven't been starters that I believe can compete for those jobs. So I want to create as much competition in the room as possible. Michelle. Hey, Coach. Uh, Michelle Gardner, Arizona Republic newspaper. Welcome aboard. How you doing? How you doing? Great. It's great to have you. Um, obviously, being a Southern California guy and ASU's recruited at uh, California very, very well. Uh, can you tell me about kind of your approach to recruiting and obviously your ties are going to come in very handy there? Yeah, so uh, my job is to, you know, basically bring in as much as great as great a talent as I can at the linebacker position. So that's going to be my focus first. Um, and then help the other guys with anybody else that I know in the areas. Uh, I definitely been there my whole life and I know a lot of people in this world's coaching high school ball. So my job is just to ask the team. Um, Make the team as strong as possible. Well. I, I want everybody to win on our staff. So anything I can do to help anybody on our staff, that's what I want to do. Um, and and, and I'm, I look forward to doing that. Alex. Hey, Coach. Alex Weiner with the State Press. Great to see you. How you doing, man? Pretty good. How are you? I'm great. I was curious what, how far back you and AP go and what that relationship was like back in California and leading up to now. Uh, whoop, shoot. We played at the Giants together. Before that, you know, in high school, it's not, it is now. Uh, there was no internet, so I didn't get to really know him personally. But um, over the years, uh, being in the Pac-12 together, you just, you know, you hear about each other and then having the opportunity to go coach, you know, under him at, at Poly was, was, was awesome. So I think we created a great relationship there and he got to see me, how I coached, how I was hands-on and got to see me day to day. So I think it helped with us making this transition to this when he was the coordinator, bringing me in over to be the linebacker coach. 
Ode? Coach, a lot of times we hear from uh, folks like yourself who played against ASU, um, we're just, you know, living in SoCal, really familiar with the program, always talking about the Sun Devils, we want those programs like, you know, always on the cusp, always like this close to get, getting over the hump. I'm just curious, when you, when you look back at the game that ASU uh, had against USC in the Coliseum, I know missed opportunity, uh, but is that, a, is that also maybe one more um, evidence, if you will, that this program can really compete, you know, with, with anybody in the Pac-12 and really take it even a step further? Oh, yeah. I think um, not only that, but I think you just have to finish. At the end of the day, some things, and which is great, you know what I mean? It's kind of like that spring, like having a spring, that spring ball uh, gives you that, gives you what you need for the next year, right? So now moving forward, um, you can you can know what you need to do to finish out. You can look back at it, and you also have a chance to work on it. And the turnaround is so much so much faster that um, it doesn't hurt as much, I, I believe. I think you can just get back to work. You know what I'm saying? Fix the things that we need to do to win the game, finish out the game, and, and, and we'll be victorious. But I was on the other side. I was like, dang, we lose this one. Woo, we out of here. They gonna <laughs> get us out of here. So, man, but, you know, I was I was happy on that day. But I think going forward, um, we're, I'm really looking forward to us playing here, um, especially at home. And with the group of guys that we have, I really, I'm really, really excited about it. Christian. Yeah, Coach, kind of a similar question, but just wondering, coming from USC, I think the ASU brand has sort of grown nationally under Coach Edwards. What was your perception of ASU as a program before you interviewed for the job? You mean this year or when I was playing? Just like, you know, this year, right? Before you were going to interview, you know, what was sort of your perception before getting to know everyone on the staff about what the oh, program yeah. well, was like? I think, um... Just when, like looking at the team, it was like I had to do the breakdown on them. I was actually on the offensive room last year, so I had to do the breakdown on the defense. And it was just a lot of talent. Of course, a lot of guys from SoCal, so you knew they were going to be highly motivated because of their playing back at the at the Coliseum and playing against the guys they've been growing up with. You know what I mean? So the, there's a lot, a lot of talent here. And, you know, like Jer Jeremy Lole, also, you know what I mean? I had him at Poly. You know what I mean? So I knew those guys. Uh uh, coached uh, um, uh, shoot against uh, the other line, the linebacker. So Butler. yeah, Butler. Uh, I have Merlin on my seven on seven team back in the day. So knew what those guys could do and played against Merlin. We had problems when he was at Sarah. So having those guys uh, and knowing those guys, I knew that they was gonna come with it. And they played a hell of a game, honestly. Defensively, they did a lot of great things. They just need to finish. Michael. Yeah, Coach Michael Carasino, believe in the uh, Pac-12 podcast. Uh, glad you're here. So, speaking of defense, I mean, in this day and age, when it's all about offense and scoring, I mean, is it is it more is it fun coaching defense, or does it get more frustrating? Because me personally, I love defensive battles. I don't care if it's a low score as long as it's a good game. But is it when you're coaching? I mean, is it tougher with the guys to just get them focused on overall what you want to do? I don't think it's frustrating. I think good defense is good defense, and um. But, you know, the frustrating thing I would say is hard is, is tackling. Um, they ask these guys to make plays, and sometimes the hits that you can possibly have, which can't be avoided, um, will cost you. So that's going to be a very important thing to teach and talk to the guys about constantly is tackling, how you tackle, how you finish, you know what I mean? Because those little things uh, can come back to bite you in, in, in a series or in a game. Any other questions for coach? All right, thanks for the time, coach. Works up. Thanks, coach. <laughs> Thank you.